Man, shit, I was trying to go make a play. Nigga was trying to rob me. We, we, we had gotten a shootout. I ended up getting shot in the leg and shit. Oh, that's just a nine. See your bank boy. Okay. Okay, so a few hours before you're, you do this whole announcement with heavy camp, he ends, up get, he ends up getting Yeah. The 22-year-old was a local rapper known as Bank Boy Wayne. Memphis police say he was sitting in a car with another man outside a barber shop on South Main when someone got out of a black infinity and opened fire. Morton was hit several times. Yeah, don't think I know. Yeah, my little nigga put your ass out the hood. Don't think I don't know. Nigga, I be in your hood every other day, nigga. You never there, nigga. Boy, you a straight up biatch. Hey, go sell some her, nigga. You remember you was selling her and shit in high school? Moochie, get your ass on, nigga. You ain't, nigga, you, nigga, go get your chain back, whole ass, nigga. If a nigga sign, if a nigga on the alpha day, because it's some sign, you gotta sign this shit, cuz, you hear me? Come on, cuz, I ain't doing none of that shit, cuz. I'm like, bro, you trip me with like booster. I swear to God, any nigga I see from over that way, I'm smacking him. Self on God, come on. Me and you outside, nigga, shake your head. The bitch trying to wait on this pot. Talked about what we discussed. You said you gonna smack me when all this stuff was going on. And you gonna do this to me, you know what I'm saying? So I just took care of my business. Hey, yo, squad, what's the drill? Back with another video, man. It's been a while since we lost the Memphis legend, Young Dolph, but Memphis has continued to shake and bake with rappers that's been doing their thing. One of them is CMG's artist, Lil Amigo. His life has had some near misses before he got to the music bag, but it came with losses of his own, from day ones to his pops, and still beef between CMG and Paper Route going on, and it got him in an altercation with Dolph's artist. Is he smart enough to avoid losing it all, or will the industry trick him out of his position? This is the story of Lil Amigo. So without further ado, let's skip the play play and get down to business. Coming up in North Memphis, Lil Amigo was fortunate enough to have a good relationship with both his moms and his pops. But that doesn't mean that his life was sweet. See, in Memphis, it can get grimy. And Lil Amigo was surrounded by criminal activities terrorizing the city. Like Memphis, shit, it's gritty, grimy. It's like, shit, it's crime, shit, poverty, it's a lot of shit. I mean, shit, you know. Coming up in that environment made him grow up quick and become a man. Even though his family wasn't wanting for nothing, he came up being influenced by the street culture, seeing it play out all before his eyes when spending time at his grandma's house. At what age would you say you jumped off the porch? Shit. Man, been off the porch, really, though, my whole life, because shit, like, my uncles and shit, so it's like, I, I grew with my mom, but I was always at my grandma house in the hood and shit, so it's like, I've been seeing all this shit as a young nigga growing up, so. What made him go deeper into that lifestyle was seeing his unks and fam and them having the bag and driving around in nice whips. They were his role models, and he wanted to rack it up just like them. Well, shit, you know, my uncles and them, they getting money and shit, driving all the cars I want to be when I get older and shit. You know, seeing that shit. Around the 10th grade, he started being for real, for real about dabbling in street activity and hustling to get guap. When did you fall into the streets, though? Man, that shit was probably like, I always kind of been on the way, like I was going to school too at the same time, and I used to play basketball too. So it's okay. like, man, probably I say for real, for real, probably when I stopped hooping, probably around the ninth, tenth grade, some shit like that. Lil Amigo would feel the pain and losing a loved one when he was around 15 when his pops passed away. Yeah. I mean, 15, I'm uh, tripping here now. 2010, I was 15, I'm tripping. Okay, that's a rough age, man, to be 15 years old and to lose your dad, uh, which is really young. His pops was eating at Benihana, and he told them that he had an allergic reaction to seafood, so separate the meals when making his. But it seemed like they didn't clean off the grill from a previous order for somebody else, and it got mixed in with his meal, thus causing him to have an allergic reaction, and then he ultimately ended up losing his life. He seafood allergic to seafood. He, was al he allergic to seafood and shit. He had went to Benihana and ate, but he told them, separate his food and shit. You know, they're supposed to cook your shit on different grills. I guess the grill they cooked his food on, they cooked some more people food before they had seafood, like, you know, the oils and shit from the, from the seafood. I guess it's still on the grill. They ain't cleaning shit properly. Lil Amigo luckily had his unk and him to be there to help fill the void that his pops left. He made the best of it and tried to do right by his moms by going to college, but that only lasted about two years before he said that his life was being wasted and it was a waste of time keeping him from the bag. You actually went to college, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had did like uh, two years of college. 
Hmm. I really, I ain't like this shit though. What's crazy is that even while he was going to college, he was still hustling. And it almost got him clipped when a deal went bad. And Lil Migo and his day one homie and cuz, Theatric Morton, AKA CEO Bankboy, headed over to Arkansas to conduct the transaction. But when they crossed over the bridge and got there, they realized that the folks in them was trying to hit a lick. And Lil Migo ended up getting shot when they ended up in a shootout. And then I guess at 18, you got Yeah, I got I hear, yeah, I got Okay. Can you tell me what led up to that situation? Man, shit, I was trying to go make a play. Nigga was trying to rob me. We, we, we had gotten the shit. I ended up getting shot in the leg and shit. Lil Amigo learned a valuable lesson that day about how to move better and to always trust his gut because he had a bad feeling from the get-go, but he decided to keep going to get the bread. You had said some shit like, man, you just knew. Something told you not to go over there, but you did it anyway. Yeah, yeah, that shit happened, that shit happened in August. So I, had, I was trying to go make a little play. My nigga ended up trying to trying to rob us and shit, but we ended up having a shoot at and shit. I had got shot in the leg. He bounced back and was on his grind, but if you ain't getting ran down on, it's the boys in blue trying to catch you lacking. And they caught Lil Vigo in the whip with some herb and a pole and tossed him in a cell. But he was smart though. He had his strap license, so when he went through the process, he was let off the hook with no worries. Is that your first uh, charge? Yeah, yeah, but I had, but I got my license though. Oh, so you good? Yeah, I had my license then too, so. But you know, once you catch a charge, they take your shit, then you gotta go through the process. But I beat the shit and I got my license back. He was navigating the street life, but at a certain point in time, he started rapping with his bro that was already doing music, Bank Boy. At first, he was just playing around, but about a year after he got hit, Lil Amigo decided to take the rap game serious, and him and his homie was aiming for the top. He used to listen to all of the lyricists and street rappers and hustlers, and his first name was Money Man Amigo because he used to rock with Money Man music. But then he decided to go with Lil Amigo. I call myself Money Man Amigo. I ain't gonna lie, like I used to bump the shit out of Money Man. Like that shit was hard as hell. Like when he first came out, like I used, I made the most money to Money Man and Lil Baby, like trapping and shit. Made the most money to them niggas. So hey, when he first came out, like damn, Money Man hard. Yeah, I'm calling myself Money Man Amigo. I'm getting money for real. So it's like. I started calling myself, but I'm like, nah, I don't want to be, I don't want to have to sign name to somebody else, so I just turned my shit to let me go. The song that sent his career up was a banger called Rockstar. After that, there was no stopping his rise. I did this song called Rockstar. Like, that was the song that popped it off for me. Right, so Rockstar, that was your first hit. Yeah, that was my first take, like, the one that got me out of it. He caught the attention of the record label CMG. Fellow Memphis rapper and CMG artist Black Youngster would call him, which led to him having a meeting with Yo Gotti after Gotti posted that he wanted to sign him for 500 bands. They would link up and make it happen on stage with an official announcement that Lil Amigo was now family in the CMG home. And I also want to say, welcome to CMG Heavy Camp, my little nigga right here. Let's go. It was a moment to celebrate. Bro made it, but a tragedy in the midst of all that took away all the joy of that moment. The same day that he was gonna make his big announcement, his homeboy ended up getting hit up by hanging with some people he ain't know headed to a barber shop that he wasn't familiar with. He was with his partner, not knowing that his partner had beefs of his own and the ops were trying to take his head. They went to a barber shop where he wasn't used to going. They pulled up for his homie and let the hammer fly. Sadly, CEO Bankboy was the one that lost his life in the altercation. Cause when they pulled in, the car was facing the building, so like they back turned in the way somebody did pull behind them. So the car pulled behind them, they hopped out shoe, and shit pulled off. The news reported that CEO Bankboy was in the car with old boy when a shooter got out of the black infinity and sprayed the car. The 22-year-old was a local rapper known as Bankboy Wayne. Memphis police say he was sitting in a car with another man outside a barbershop on South Main when someone got out of a black infinity and opened fire. Morton was hit several times. Footage of the Merkin was released showing the hitter open fire and the car speeding off. Lo Amico got the news and broke down. It was their time to shine. He made it and he was finna take his homie to the top too. But instead, he had to watch his homie lifeless. Yeah, hey, yeah, I was in the car crying. Like I just got off the phone with him, I was crying like, Cause well then after they like when they called we actually had pulled up to the scene where the shit had happened and they had it blocked off and shit and we had went to the hospital and shit and that's when they were like he did and shit and I had man, I had walked up to the side I had broke down crying right there. As if that wasn't enough hurt to be going through, Bank Boy's family stopped rocking with him because they accused him of selling out to the Illuminati for fame by sacrificing CEO Bank Boy so he can get the CMG deal. I'm already having money. I right, what? It's just some sick ass shit. I can't even. 
don't even know. Right. I can't and, even explain. I, I can't even explain the theory where they even get that shit from. Right. Well, I, I, the crazy shit that I'm talking about is, I guess they started claiming that it was a Illuminati sacrifice. Yeah. Like I ain't even signed a real a record deal. You thinking on some Illuminati shit? Like you? They wouldn't even accept his money when he wanted to pay for the entire funeral. Right. And I guess there was some drama around his funeral. I guess there was a GoFundMe page that his sister started, even though you were gonna pay for the funeral. Yeah. I even tried to pay for the funeral and everything. Like. I was gonna pay for this shit myself, the whole friend, everything, all that shit. But like, they got on that weird ass shit, I just decent myself for them. Lil Amigo uses his music to get his emotions out instead of talking to people, so he got in the booth with tears in his eyes and released the tribute song, The Bank Never Closed. Right after he passed, you wrote the song, The Bank Never Closed. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you, were, you were crying while you were uh, yeah, I was crying. together. I, yeah, I was crying. I was crying when I made this song. Like, I put everybody out the studio when I made that motherfucker. Like, I was really did crying. As I'm finishing my, my, my bars and shit. Like, you can hear this. You can hear pain in my voice in some of the bars. Migo had to keep it pushing and live the dream for both him and his homie. His career was going up and racks were stacking to the ceiling. He made it and was doing right by his fallen bro, expanding into other avenues and businesses bossing up. You got the 18 wheelers. Any other businesses you trying to get into? You into man, crypto get a or anything? Food truck and shit. Food I want a food truck. But I was trying to, man, I was trying to, um, I had offended about this building and build a studio, like in my hood and shit, but. He would also go major when he signed a Def Jam. I had switched with him. And you know, shit, now we hear Def Jam. How's it feel? Nah, it feel good because, um, like, to be here and just to be able to do this shit early at a young, early point in my career, I mean, to me, this mean I got far shit. I'm doing it now and then later. In an interview, Lil Amigo will clarify that his deal with CMG was more like a management deal, but the street politics started getting in the way of the vision. CMG was famously into it with Paper Route, more specifically Yo Gotti and them versus Young Dolph. Lil Amigo always kept away from the beef for talking ill on Dolph after he was murdered. Is there any issues you feel with Young Dolph or is that their issue, not yours? I don't, I don't know that nigga, I don't know. He would be dragged into the beef when Young Dolph's cousin, Key Glock, would post a snapshot of a message from a fan talking about snatching Lil Amigo chain and he co-signed it. That's when Lil Amigo would respond with a message of his own. Migo then tried to test Key Glock's gangster by challenging him to do a show in the city. Glock wasn't having anybody trying to low boy him and check his status, and he shot back with a response the same way. From there, it just got out of control. The two was online dropping vids going back and forth, dissing each other. Yeah, don't think I know. Yeah, my little nigga put your bitch ass out the hood. Don't think I don't know. Nigga, I be in your hood every other day, nigga. You never there, nigga. Boy, you a straight up. Hey, go sell some hurt, nigga. You remember you was selling her and shit in high school? And Migo wasn't playing either. He even went that big Moochie Grapes head top as well. Moochie, get your ass on, nigga. You ain't, nigga, you, nigga. I ain't better. That now got him heated, and then he hopped on the gram to send shots at Lil Amigo, too. Big Moochie Grape came at Lil Amigo bag, exposing him for not being a trapper, saying that he got all his money because of the payout when his pops passed at Benny Hanna. Tell him your daddy died off a piece of shrimp. That's how you got all that money. Come on, man. Tell him all your daddy died off a piece of shrimp. That's how you got all that money back. Man, you ain't get the beef was getting mad disrespectful, and they started bringing family into the mix. Next we know, Lil Amigo was being rumored to be a walking lick because people were snatching his chain and posting pics with it. Then pics of a rapper by the name of CEO Jizzle were posted up with him having Migo chain on, hinting that it allegedly got snatched again. Lil Amigo would appear to confirm that the jewelry was his when he posted a clip with new chains addressing the matter and claiming that his chain wasn't snatched, but they broke into his whip. Oh, you mad at the too? He took a picture with the chain, had to take fucking kid to the next. He then posted a pic of how much he dropped for the new ice to flex that losing his chain didn't affect his pockets. You know the internet was gonna have some laughs at that, but PRE got into the ring again and threw their licks in. This time from PRE artist Grove Hero. He told Lil Boosie that if he catch anyone with them CMG chains on that it was beef, he gonna smack him. I'm like, bro, you tripping me with like Boosie. I swear to God, any nigga I see from over that way, I'm smacking him. I'm like, bro, niggas got gun. Yeah. He like, bro, I'm telling you, Boosie, ain't, man, I'm smacking niggas. Sure enough, Grove caught bro lacking at the airport and smacked him just as he promised. You Migo? You crazy, you Migo? Ah, the up on hey. What you wanna do? Come out here. Okay, nigga, come on, I'm trying to call your partners, bro. 
Lil Amigo was at the center of the attention of the internet, but he claimed Grove pulled the sucker punch and then dipped to the cops when they was nearby. Grove, though, called Cap and said that he ran up on bro because Gotti brother put a bag on his head. If I see Juke, if I see Gotti, if I see, if I see, uh, if I see Migo, or if I see Youngstar, I'm gonna get on that head. This shit ain't got nothing to do with nobody else, bro. I said if I see them folk, because these folk got some, had something to do with it, bro. These folk niggas don't know that Juke put a hit out, bro. Later in the interview, he broke down how the altercation all played out. Then I was like, damn, the only way I can see if it's him, if I play like, I'm recording, you know what I'm saying? So it was never about me trying to record him to fight. I was recording to see if it was really him because I didn't never see his face at all on the plane or none of this. Lo Amigo made it out and he living life, but he seems to be the target of a lot of ops and he getting himself into a lot of beef. All it takes is for one dude's ego to take over and things go too far. He got a good stack and bread in the industry. I hope he doesn't get himself tricked out of position like so many other rappers. Makes no sense to make it out, then lose it all over something that don't even really matter. But what can I say other than stay smart, stay alert, and stay real. I'm out, y'all.